thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. I'm joined here today with Sini Ramo, who is the gender analyst here at the Global Polio Eradication Initiative. Thank you so much for joining, Sini. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Uh, this brings me to my first question, that is, how is gender and health related? Well, gender and health are related in many different ways. Um, gender is something that we call a social determinant of health, so together with other factors like age, ethnicity, race, socioeconomic status, disability. Gender is really something that influences health outcomes for people around the world. And what's really important when we're talking about gender is that we're talking about gender as a social concept. So it's something that is socially constructed. So we're talking about how specific gender norms and roles and relations around the world, how they influence the lives of men and women and boys and girls and people with non-binary identities. So it's really a concept that is underpinned by power relations and unequal distribution of power. And as such, it's really something that influences health outcomes for people. Um, gender has an impact, for example, on our access to resources, our control over resources, what kind of specific needs and vulnerabilities and challenges we might have. So there are many different ways that, that gender relates to, to health. Uh, I guess this brings me to my next question, and that is how is gender and polio eradication connected? Yes, yeah, so gender relates to polio eradication in various different ways. So as gender is a social determinant of health, of course, it also impacts immunization outcomes. Um, there are many different ways, but I think one of the, the more obvious um, direct ways that gender dynamics impact polio eradication efforts is the delivery of vaccines. So when we are doing the, the vaccination campaigns in, in the polio endemic countries, for example in Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, we're doing a house-to-house -house approach. So we have vaccinators and social mobilizers going from door to door to deliver the vaccine for children. And it's been really shown that uh, female vaccinators are, are preferred a lot more than male vaccinators because in certain contexts uh, men cannot enter households so women have a lot um, easier access to the household so they can also then uh, interact with the mothers who are often the primary caregivers and give them other very crucial health related information. Um, so in terms of actually reaching every last child and, and reaching, you know, households, uh, we really need more, more women vaccinators. So that's one specific way that we see the gender dynamics. But what's really important also that we're not just talking about women's participation as frontline workers and as vaccinators in terms of the instrumental value that they enable us to reach more children, but it's really a question of, of course, of you know, e equality and human rights and our core values, making sure that you know, women and men can equally and meaningfully participate in all aspects of polio eradication. So that's one aspect. And then we have something that we call gender-related barriers to immunization. And these barriers really operate in, in multiple different ways. Um, for example, in certain contexts, boys are preferred a lot over girls or valued more than girls, so they might get better access to health care, um, crucial resources like education, uh, better nutrition, for example. Uh, so this is one way in which gender inequality really affects health outcomes and, and immunization outcomes. And also in terms of other gender-related barriers to immunization, um, if we talk about the, the actual decision-making around vaccination, whether or not uh, caregivers will vaccinate their children, this is of course something that's, that's very much gendered as well. Um, and in many contexts we know that uh, women really lack resources. Um, for example, you know, being able to, to enter clinics or access clinics, they might lack the time or the transportation or the money that is required. Um, so this is something that gender inequality really impacts as well. And then because of you know, gender roles and norms and relations, uh, men and women might have different ways in which, for example, they get health-related information and information about the vaccines. So these are all some of the different ways that gender dynamics and gender really influence uh, immunization outcomes as well. So we're talking on the individual level, but also community level, societal level, and also institutional level uh, gender-related issues. Um, okay, so my next question, I guess, is what is the GPEI doing to address gender-related issues in its work to eradicate polio? Yeah. So the Global Polio Eradication Initiative is just actually in the process of finalizing uh, a gender strategy to really guide its work in gender mainstreaming and making sure that we integrate gender issues and considerations into all aspects of the polio eradication work that we do. 
Um, say one very important aspect of this is gender analysis. So really making sure that um, we are conducting a proper analysis of the different gender norms, roles and relations um, and understanding how gender impacts people's uh, lived realities on the ground and making sure we have that more nuanced social understanding. Um, so that's something that is very important and that's a big part of this strategy as well. So making sure that we are doing proper analysis um, of the situation. And importantly, what is very important for the analysis is data. So for us, what we're really working towards is making sure that our data is disaggregated by sex and other factors as well, but to really enable us to have that information. Um, sometimes I guess it's easy to assume that we're just being neutral and you know there are no problems, but if you don't have the data to back it up, it's very hard to see where the gaps might be or where, where you might have some discrepancies. So when we're collecting data, for example, about children that are being immunized, um, making sure that boys and girls are immunized equally and that they are reached through our disease surveillance on an equal way, that's something very important for us. So we're able to track any discrepancies and then address these discrepancies. And we also have specific gender sensitive indicators that we are tracking and monitoring. So we are exactly, we're, we're tracking whether girls and boys are equally vaccinated when we're conducting vaccination campaigns in the field. And, and also in surveillance, making sure that, that there's no sort of big discrepancies or differences, or if there are, we're able to actually see this and then address them. So that is one, one major thing that's part of this strategy. Then, of course, we're looking into how can we mainstream gender across all the interventions that we do, for example, in our communications and community mobilization and outreach work as well, making sure that we really look into how gender impacts, for example, sp specific preferences uh, people might have for communication channels and the ways that they get information about polio vaccines uh, for themselves and their children. Um, so this is, this is something that's a really big part of it. Another important part is also equal participation uh, of men and women in, in polio eradication activities. So this is something, as I mentioned before, um, that we are working towards increasing women's meaningful and equal participation at all levels. So of course in the field level as vaccinators and social mobilizers, but really also uh, in more sort of um, senior management levels as well at all levels of the polio eradication initiative. So this is something that is also very much built into the strategy, looking at ways of how we can actually increase uh, women's participation. Um, and then what we're also doing, I mean, a lot of the work we're doing is making sure we mainstream gender externally in, in the work that the GPI does, but also we're looking more internally as well of how can we, for example, improve um, our own organizational cultures and environments uh, making sure that you know there's zero tolerance for any kind of harassment, that everyone has has a safe, uh, supportive, inclusive environment to work in. So that we're also doing some training with staff, uh, with polio staff uh, related to gender-related issues, and we're also going to be building up a gender focal point network to really support gender mainstreaming at the different levels of the GPI. So there are a lot of different ways that that we're currently currently working to actually strengthen gender mainstreaming internally, but then externally as well in the polio eradication activities that we do. Perfect. Looks like we've got a lot going on. Uh, where can we learn more about GPA's work related to gender? Yeah, so on our website, uh, it's www.polioeradication.org slash gender. There we have uh, a lot of resources related to gender and polio. We have, for example, a, a frequently asked questions document, um, something called the Gender Technical Brief, which is a very good gender analysis of polio eradication. It kind of addresses some of the gender-related barriers I was mentioning before, so it goes more into depth into those. Um, we also have infographics available on the website and and also stories from the field, from our frontline workers, etc. So the website is a very good resource. And then when we have the, the gender strategy, we'll be also posting this on the website as well. Perfect. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching and listening this episode of Coffee with Polio Experts. Join us again for another edition. And until next time, bye.